I live an immensely privileged life. My privilege exists not merely despite my color, but also because of it. I grew up biracial in a liberal multicultural community where people like me were celebrated. This acceptance and that of other suburban kids of color was overwhelmingly earnest. It provided opportunities that I may not have made the most of, but were repeatedly provided. I was ever conscious of the fact that America, the America I was presented with anyway, was rooting for me. Pointing out that I, as one individual black man and possessed of more privilege in my life than millions of white people in America, is not to claim that the historic struggle of African Americans and other marginalized groups is roughly comparable to that of poor white people today. It is instead to say that privilege and marginalization in America are not mere matters of color, and uniting a deeply polarized America depends on our understanding that fact. I remember growing up with a boy named Donnie from Tennessee. Donnie spoke with a thick southern twang that conjured stereotypic images of backwoods and chewing tobacco. He wrote half his letters backwards and couldn't reliably be counted on to start his work on the right side of the page, possibly signs of dyslexia. He listened to country music and Pink Floyd. Donnie was dumb. Donnie was a redneck. Donnie was teased and isolated. We didn't know how Donnie got to be in a class with the rest of us, but it was clear he didn't belong. I certainly can remember immigrant children from Sri Lanka and elsewhere who had difficulty fitting in too. Their accents and unfamiliarity with our sports left them feeling out of place. Kids with names like Shuganish got much of the same. But if anything made it worse for Donnie, it was that there was no culture of charity for kids like him. When an immigrant student would join our class, he or she would receive a special introduction. We were told to be patient with them while they adjusted to their new environment. Special interest would be taken in them, just like, in a different way, special interest was taken in me. No special interest would be taken in kids like Donnie. Is that right? Donnie needed that support too. Millions of white kids endure rural poverty in the Deep South, narrowing opportunities in the industrial corpses of the Rust Belt, and diminishing lifespans in drug-addled and sometimes violence-riddled neighborhoods littered across Appalachia. Yet our society too often ignores their struggles. Why? There's a belief among poor, working-class, rural, religious, and often Southern white people that we, cosmopolitan, multicultural, academic, political, coastal, and cultural elites, do not want them. And by and large, it's true. The shortfall of empathy for them from far more privileged quarters of American society inflames the trends that have led so many of them into conspiracy culture and populist rage. Donnie and kids like him have so much in common with black kids that I grew up with, with ethnic names, urban dialects, and harder lives, who received less in the way of social access and special support than I did. This doesn't make their experiences the same or all of their struggles perfectly equal, but it does mean that there must be common ground among those who would wish to uplift the most vulnerable among us, a common ground that crosses the color line. We must not be afraid to learn from the example of Martin Luther King Jr., who taught that we should recognize the mutual human dignity of all suffering people. I share my privilege with many who look like me and many who don't. And those who are marginalized share their marginalization with many who look like them and many who don't. The historical context of our struggles differ, yet we should never be forced to cherry pick which of the disenfranchised are worthy of our understanding. To do so obliterates the common cause that ought to exist between all people who are shut out of the American dream and the empathy for them that ought to exist from those with more privilege. Understanding is the foundation of empathy. In a polarized America, we need it now more than ever. I'm John Wood Jr., National Ambassador for Braver Angels. Join me in expanding empathy and understanding across America at fairforall.org.